I've got this whole dragon training thing down. Brother, sit! Yeah, the... yeah. <laughs> see what I mean? Now to make the s'more. How do you put this on the thing over there? Greetings, the world and the internet. I am the great Matthew Squeak, and welcome to Squirtle Talk Review. We're having another look at the prior episode today, and it's got brother all excited. Because we're going back to the realm of Vikings with that spin-off of How to Train Your Dragon that has difficulties picking a name and sticking with it. And since last time we took a look at its first stage of evolution, this time we're going to take a look at its final stage, where DreamWorks officially left the realm of TV networks behind to stake their claim in the land of Netflix. So this is... Um, uh, something else of Burke. As you can hear, it's the same epic tune as before that gets your heart racing, but missing its epic dragons in flight. Still love the music, and you'll also notice that the whole gang looks quite a bit different from the last we saw of them. So yes, that's right. They officially aged them up to have them look more like their personas from the second movie. And they look great. Really great. Before Hiccup was this unimpressive cloth-wearing outcast, which was fitting for the first movie, but here, this is more fitting a look for the fearless leader of the Dragon Rider. DreamWorks has really pulled out all the stops on this show. The character detail looked amazing. You can see the whole face moving as the emote, like an actual person. The environments are creative and spectacular. Spectacular, and the dragons are just as impressive as ever. This is why some of the other DreamWorks shows bug me so much. They clearly demonstrate they are capable of producing high-quality work, but then they throw out stuff like this. It looks like they just let their five-year-olds make it. Anyway, this episode starts off with a mysterious dragon and writer brutally attacking a Burr cargo vessel. And when word of the attack reaches the chief, He's none too happy with the Dragon Riders. Bucket and Maltz saw the whole thing. Uh -huh. And don't try convincing me that there's anyone else in the archipelago who could pull something like this off! Well, there's only one logical choice of action in this matter. Blame the twins and move on. Who's me, Chief? I couldn't control myself. I had to do it. But with all riders accounted for, it's decided that the mysterious Dragon Rider is indeed mysterious. Rogue Dragon Rider? Not good, not good at all. No, it isn't. It looks like we found ourselves another mystery! So they go to the scene of the crime to attempt to identify the dragon in question. And fortunately, they find some evidence. Yeah. <gasps> a barb! That looks like one of Stormflies. Which means the dragon we're looking for could belong to the Sharp class. In and that, of course, leads them to conclude that they need to go back to Burke and have Buckethead here describe the dragon he saw to a sketch artist. Really, guys? He was standing right here earlier. You didn't think to ask him to describe what he saw? No, it takes you flying all the way out to the middle of nowhere to suddenly think, oh yeah, maybe we ought to ask that eyewitness what he saw. So with the new mystery dragon absent from the great big book of dragons, like every other dragon they encounter in this show, some great helpful book this turned out to be. You've got one-of-a-kind dragons like Night Furies, but missing things like Typhoomerangs that are all over the freaking place. But thanks to this mysterious dragon eye thingy they've acquired, they eventually discover the dragon in question. Fish legs, do your thing. Okay, razor whip. Sharp class dragon, long spiny barbed tail. How are you reading that? The words are being blocked by your fatness. We got that! Give us something new! You wanna do this, not loud? Uh, duh, I would! Well, maybe you should try doing what Fishlegs is doing and stand directly in the line of light that you are trying to read. That'll help. 
So they eventually do get to lead, and off they go in search of the mysterious rider. And wouldn't you know it, they find something. Could be the loot from the ship. And these gashes look familiar. All right, gang, let's split up and search the island for our rogue rider and his razor whip. He can't be far away. Yes, let's do the thing everyone does in every single monster movie ever. Split up so you're easier to pick off one by one. And wouldn't you know it, they start getting picked off one by one. So now Hiccup and Toothless have to square off against the mysterious rider in some epic air-to-air -air combat. Look out! Toothless, give me all you got! I have you now. And the mysterious rider turns out to be... another returning character. Heather? For those of you that haven't been following the original series, this is Heather, known for such things as stealing dragons, covertly copying dragon techniques, and sabotaging other riders. All in the name of saving her parents or something. I don't know, we never get to know these people. I'm sure Heather has a really good reason for doing what she did, right? Look, I've been living on my own out here for years, and I've made more than a few enemies. I didn't want you guys to be involved. I needed to send you back to Burke. You Yes, go away so she can continue to indiscriminately plunder your ships. But seeing as how she's now officially a reoccurring character, all is forgiven, and we're taking her home with us. But she needed to be nursed back to health, and when she was better, I used the training you guys taught me back on Burke. Used the training they taught her, stole the techniques as she was spying on them, practically the same thing. So we take a moment to play My Dragon is Cooler Than Your Dragon. Oh, what else can she do? Windshear's breath can burn the flesh off a human from a hundred feet away. And how exactly is it that you know such a very specific and incredibly lethal action that your dragon is capable of performing? I guess that's why we never see it breathe fire of any kind. Ever. We need to keep that general audience rating. We were just kids. We've all grown up. Yeah, but she was so sweet, and now she's so... I don't know. You could also use any one of these terms to describe her, but yes, yeah, she was so sweet and innocent back then. And just like the sweet, innocent, and totally not ship-sinking maniac that she is, she breaks the locks to the dragon cages so she can't be followed. Oh yes, they lock the dragons up at night, cause nothing says I trust my dragon more than putting it under lock and key at night. But oops, she forgot to check the Night Fury cage. So Hiccup follows the conniving Heather to her mysterious partner. Come on, come on, just turn around. Let me see your face. Okay, this is getting strange. Who is yet another reoccurring character, Trader Johan, who can be as much a pain in the neck as a useful ally. And after a little convincing... Right then, where shall I begin? He tells her story. I suppose it would have something to do with her entire village, including her own family, being decimated by a rather nasty group of undesirables. She's made it her personal mission to avenge her island and her family. By sinking and looting ships. She's not looting. She's redistributing back to the victims of those horrible crimes. Every thieving ship that Heather attacks means they will get back some of what they've lost. But that was a Burke ship in the opening, right? That's why Stoic was so perturbed that it had been attacked. Anyway, Heather's not just playing Robin Hood. She's also out for blood. For our whole village, I want my face to be the last thing Dagger ever sees. What in the name of Thor? Were we expecting someone else at this point? So Heather charges into combat and quickly discovers that a full frontal assault was a rather poor decision. And with that, it's... over? Over? It can't be over. Tap the screen a little bit. You clearly see I have some time left. Oh, it is a part one of two, isn't it? Well, screw it. It's officially a double feature now, so bring on the part two. It, uh, what? No, apparently we're not ready for the second half yet. It's okay, they'll have it up in just a second. We'll just have to wait. So, um, anything you want to talk about? No? No, that's okay. Oh, 
Oh, here's something interesting I noticed. Notice how some of these Netflix originals have cut to black, like they're making room for some kind of commercial break or something. Like this. Look for them next time you watch one. Why do they even exist? But more importantly, part two is ready. Is it going to be just as exciting fun as the last one? Will Heather survive? Will the twins finally make sense? Will we finally see this incredibly deadly dragon breathe fire? Let's find out. When we last left our heroes, Heather was about to die because her dragon won't melt the flesh off of all these people down here. But thanks to some quick thinking by Hiccup, this situation is resolved rather quickly. And with Heather talked out of her suicide mission, she finally confesses her full story. I talked to Johan. He told me Dagger wiped out your village. And your family. First, when I was a little girl, I get separated from my birth family. Your birth family? Yes, but I don't remember much. It was so long ago. Just a few pictures in my mind. I remember my father's hands. They were rough like sandstone, but so gentle. Not that this isn't tear-jerking and all, but shouldn't you be dwelling more on what's-his-face and what's-her-face? You know, the actual people that raised you and were murdered by Dagger? This is the whole reason you're on this vendetta. The adopted parents murdered right in front of you? Screw that! You only care about your real father that you have five seconds of memories of. Heather has gone through something incredibly tragic. In the top ten worst things that could possibly happen to you kind of thing. But... Since she never actually dwells on the deceased parents, it doesn't feel... real. Heck, they don't even have names. They barely have faces. This whole thing feels like a giant misdirect of the real problem. Look, I know the murder of parents sounds bad, but don't worry, it's not that bad. Look, she's trying to find her birth parents. Isn't that sweet? So back at Dragon Headquarters, everything is forgiven. Again. And even Astrid and Heather start forming a little friendship. I prefer close combat to throwing. So I can stare my enemy in the eye. Not a bad tactic. But don't discount. Hmm. The element of surprise. I like that. It's one of Hiccup's favorite tactics. So you two are a thing, right? And wasting no time to getting to the most important topic that any two girls can have. What boy do they like and why? It's not just isolated to this one episode either. When these two are on the screen alone together, it's the only thing they ever seem to talk about. It gets uncomfortable after a while. What? No, just friends. Seriously, girls, this cannot be the only thing you have to talk about. But you know what? Since they brought it up, let's talk about it. Let's talk about this. You might be distracted by all the oh will they, won't they, finally confess their true feelings to one another, but let me remind you of two things. This is how the first movie ended. What? What is, was it always going to be this way? Because... I could get used to it. And this is how the second movie starts. Maybe you just don't see it yet. Ugh. Maybe. Ugh. I don't care what this show tries to say or do, they're a couple. There is no will they, won't they, because they're technically already together. So why is it like this then? Because that's what every other show in the history of ever has done. Yes, they twisted the relationship so that it could follow a predictable, overused formula. Gee, I wonder if this boy is ever going to confess to this girl. Of course they are, because they always do! For a show that's had plenty of epic moments and creative storylines overall, this feels like a pretty cheap cop-out to use a paint-by-numbers romance. Getting the girl-slash-boy is not a prize to get at the end of the show, nor should it be. Confessing your love for another character is not the end of the story. Now they have to juggle a relationship and learn to get closer to each other. If anything, their story is just now getting started. It's a new chapter! And no, having characters in a stable relationship doesn't automatically mean it jumps into PG-13 levels or makes them any less adorable or fun to watch. The second movie pulled it off just fine. Hiccup and Astrid were in a stable relationship the whole movie through. And guess what? It was sweet. It was cute. And most importantly, the world didn't blow up because of it. And even if they wanted to twist the story into this will-they-won't-they they gimmick, 
They could have at least done something for consistency. I know DreamWorks shows aren't the most consistent of things out there, but there are Typhoon Rangs in the second movie. Clearly, it's attempting to tie them together. They could have given us a scene, one scene, where Astrid confesses that her little kiss may have been a product of an adrenaline high from Hiccup cheating death and saving all of Burke to boot, and not sure if that's the direction she wants her life to go right now. That would have been acceptable. D Still would have been a little cheeseball-y and shallow, but it's certainly better than just straight up kissing and run. Okay, I'm done. Let's move on. Where were we? I like a little smart. Like fish legs. Fish legs? Seriously? Move past the boy talk already! Astrid and Heather go find Trader Johan and see what information he's gathered. Dagger is said to purchase a fleet of new ships from a group of salty undesirables in the Sea of Despair. But be wary, these new ships for his armada are outfitted with powerful anti-dragon winches and catapults. After the deal is done, I won't be able to find him again. Dagger will be back in the wind, adrift like a leaf in a stream. Ugh. And I've used my last grapevine, so I won't be able to offer my invaluable, yet at times expensive, information. Got it. Thanks, Johan. Oh yeah, I got it all right. I was wondering why he was so passionate about Heather's quest, when he clearly doesn't have much of a side in matters. Expensive information, Heather looting ship, it makes sense now. Redistributing stolen wealth, my foot. Heather's resorted to piracy in order to fund her revenge schemes. And Johan's more than happy to oblige as long as she keeps paying the tab. Gotta go now. Dagger won't be out in the open for long. Wait a minute. You want us to go into battle with Dagger and the Berserkers without Hiccup and Toothless? Dan, everyone is going to overlook this obvious development as they plan their next attack. But it's nice to know that we have a Night Fury when things get hairy. <laughs> you heard Johan, Astrid. This is our last chance. Tell him. Well, look, Heather... You too? Just forget it. All that stuff about trust and having my back. I guess that was just talk. Having your back also means stopping you from doing stupid things. Like suicide missions. But naturally, they all agree to go in the next scene. If we're gonna do this, it has to be a capture mission, not a kill mission. Agreed? Because remember, general audience. Now, Hiccup will be able to find us. So, what's your plan? Hit him when he least expects it. Meanwhile, Hiccup is tracking down a lead to help locate Heather's long lost father because, you know, that's important to this episode. Dad, that horn has your chief seal carved into it. It does. Is there something you need to tell me? <sighs> when a chief has a child, Hiccup, that child receives many gifts from all over. Now, when you were born, I asked Gobber to make the smallest axe he'd ever imagined. Where's this going? Uh, look, ab about the horn, Dad, Heather told me her father gave it to her, but it has your seal on it. It's a simple yes or no question. Is Heather my sister? No. There is another. Well, naturally, we're not going to get an answer right now, because we're going back to the others as they prepare for their attack. <sighs> it's a good day to strengthen my armada. Then again, it's always a good day to strengthen my armada. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Dagger's such a fun enemy, isn't he? He's got the brains and tactics to be a threatening adversary, but he's got just enough screws loose to be as unpredictable as a Looney Tune character. <laughs> So while the boys, plus Tough Nut or Rough Nut, whichever one the girl is, are running a distraction, Heather and Astrid sneak aboard the lead ship and quietly dispatch of its crew, and even manage to subdue a dagger himself. But when the time comes, Heather decides for blood instead of capture. Windshear, finish it! No, Heather, don't! You so nice of Windshear to hold off execution because of Astrid, but before the final blow is struck, Hiccup swoops in to stop it. Oh, and you'll never guess what the twist is. And by that, I mean it's the first thing that pops into your mind. It's the most predictable, obvious twist they could think of. Years ago, Stoic gave this horn to the chief of the Berserker tribe, Oswald the Agreeable, as a gift for his newborn daughter. But you were that newborn, Heather. Oswald the Agreeable is your father. And he is also Dagger's father. 
Yep, and even Dagger knows how insane a twist it is. You never disappoint, brother. Or maybe you're actually my, my uncle. <laughs> Who knows in this crazy world? So now finding out she has blood relations with this psychopath, Heather finds herself incapable of inflicting the killer blow. Can't avenge all your friends and family you lost just because of that three-second flashback. So with little other option, they make a hasty retreat. You'll be back, and I will welcome you with open arms! That's also exactly what happens, by the way. So needing time to put her thoughts in order, Heather hits the road, and Hiccup and Astrid have a sweet yet fleeting moment. I'm sorry you're losing a friend. But I still have you. That was the two-parter of Have Dragon Will Travel, and this show is still just as epic as it's always been. Yes, I know I've been complaining a lot about it, but deep down, this show is really well made. It looks amazing. The characters are enjoyable, likable, and the adventures are epic and exciting. This Hiccup Astrid thing may be inconsistent, but that doesn't stop the show from having some touching scenes. And Heather's new brother Twist may come right the heck out of nowhere, but it does eventually lead to certain characters' growth and development. If anything, I believe this show is even better than the original incarnation that aired on Cartoon Network. Everyone just looks cooler, more fitting to the heroes of Burke, and building a base out in the frontier was a nice touch in order to get this group out the door and out into the world. Oh, and trust me, its later seasons managed to even outdo themselves time and time again. So if you're a fan of anything related to the How You Train Your Dragon, this is one adventure you definitely don't want to miss. I am the Great Matthew Squeak, and this is Squirrel Talk Review. I thank my loyal subjects for watching. Please like and subscribe to me. Also, donate here onto the Patreon account, and go out and have us some more. There's some more, you know, the marshmallow thingy. And then have more of them.